I will be opening this world record setting $200,000 box of first edition Pokemon cards live on this YouTube channel. And here's the kicker, I am selling all the packs. Well, I'm selling 35 of the packs, so I'm gonna keep one for me. 11 million views in just a few months and sent prices and interest skyrocketing to new levels that we've never seen before. That interest is going to be at an all time high. And they've heard all this uh, excitement about Pokemon. They're seeing that the values of the cards are continuing to rise. Charizard's what pretty much everyone's looking for. It's worth $200,000. Oh my God! Today, <laughs> today uh, we're gonna be doing what has actually never been done. This is gonna be the world's biggest pack battle. Pack battle. But they are heavy packs, meaning there is more than likely a holographic card on the inside, <laughs> which could be a Charizard card. I want the $200,000 card. This is a first edition Neo Destiny booster box. This is more rare than a first edition base set box. Is that hollow? Tell me it's hollow, Danny. Tell me it's it hollow. It is hollow. Oh! Charizard! Oh my god! Rapper Logic buys $200,000 Pokemon card. You heard that correctly. The headlines are correct. $226. $1,000. Today, I'm opening up a first edition base set booster pack that is worth over $25,000 in hopes of pulling another first edition base set Charizard. Many high profile individuals such as Logan Paul and Gary Vee are starting to collect and invest in Pokemon cards. But should you be investing in Pokemon cards? Want to know the top five Pokemon sets in 2021 that you as an investor or collector should be buying? Stay tuned to find out more. All of the factors are in place for 2021 to prove to be one of the greatest periods of Pokemon growth that we've ever seen. This is not financial advice. These are just merely one person speculations and forecasting of what I see in the future for the market. Today, we are counting down the top 10 best Pokemon cards to invest in from the year 2020. We talk about all things Pokemon here when it comes to the economics of it, right? When it comes to making a profit, when it comes to investing long-term, when it comes to flipping cards, that's what this channel is focused on. What do you guys think of this total? Did we make bank on today's video? Now when Logan introduces another unboxing and casually announces that he spent over $2 million acquiring not just one first edition box, but six of them, that's an entirely different ballpark. After three months, I have finally acquired the most valuable Pokemon collection in the world. He's gonna open up uh, a whole stack of these boosters and every holographic he pulls, he's instantly PSA grading it on the spot by a PSA man there. And he's gonna say, Logan Paul's like box break or opening on it. Guys, I kinda wanna do my first ever box break. This is so exciting. What do you guys think? Would you buy in if I did a box break of some kind? And also slightly nervous because each pack sold for an average of $38,250. Yeah, it might hurt a little bit, but what we sold is an experience. Trying to find what? Pokemon card! <gasps> and... They're none. Like, it's empty, empty. Time to go home, I guess, without any cards. A lot of people realistically just want to collect a few cards. They just want to be able to open up a few Hidden Fates packs, a few Champions Path packs. Pokemon is taking all the necessities that they can to make sure that they can get these products out. But again, it comes down to money and it comes down to, do you have the patience for it? I just wanted to show you the sad state that the Pokemon TCG is in. Normally this entire section is just full of Pokemon cards and there is not a single product available. I went in there the other night just to see what it was like. Not a single Pokemon card on the shelf, as most places. But I'm just gonna let you know what it's like as a day-to-day -day collector. I wanna slam my head against a brick wall sometimes going to, you know, different stores and seeing the same shelves be bare day after day after day. Sadly, there are also people that are probably big Pokemon card fans, but the money just, it, it became more about the money. It was just a quick buck. Even just the random booster packs are completely out of stock, guys. He bought a whole bunch of booster packs and he found out that they were resealed. He said that the packs were cut, like it was a clean cut. And uh, they took out all the good stuff and they just put in all the, the leftovers, basically. There's a guy 
or there's a group of people that follow around the van who drops off like your local distributor to Target and Walmarts. They follow them around and as soon as he goes to break the box and the shelf, they buy them all out. So, and that's why no one else, like collectors like myself or anybody can buy these products. They're not in it for the collection, they're in it for the money. I'm calling you a scalper, bro. No, no one's gonna go in there and buy like 12 or 20 boxes in the same day just to go home and open it. Cause I, I wanna order a hundred Happy Meals. What? for the cards. The fact that people are getting full boxes of these, that means that kids who are picking up their Happy Meal aren't getting these cards. I have personally talked to several people who have attempted to get these cards yesterday and were told they're already gone in one day. It's completely unacceptable and disgusting to hoard 100 Happy Meals. It makes the Pokemon community just look awful when this is what's happening. You can tell that they are only doing it just for the popularity. They're doing it for the, you know, oh, look at me, look what I have. They're just showing off. I'm starting to feel like I'm class, getting classed out of the Pokemon card uh, game, and it's it's kind of crazy. I'm sure a lot of you are feeling the same way. It's a very different thing to buying sealed products and immediately flipping them for profit, as opposed to people that aren't open the cards, enjoy opening the cards, and just engaging with it. Genuine new collectors who rip packs, trade and get amongst it are legit and I welcome them with open arms. But there is nothing good about somebody trying to sell you a Shining Fates ETB for triple the price on launch day. That person is the reason why you can't walk into a Target and just, I don't know, buy one yourself. They're charging $200 for Hidden Fates ETBs. They're charging as much as they can for everything else. Booster boxes, oh yeah, that one's $400. When you have people who are coming in, scalpers who are coming in and buying you know 20 30 40 cases of a product and then turning around and selling it at their whatever giant markup might be it's hard for us as business owners to be like well if we price this at MSRP we're actually helping the people who are gonna buy 30 or 40 cases at the time people say hey if I want to buy 500 packs that's my right I want 500 packs that's just the free market at play dude adapt or die dude and I get it but why does it have to be this way as the consumer if we simply do not buy the product from these people that are asking for more, they will stop asking for more. There's other collectors out there that actually enjoy collecting it. Yeah, I work, you know, everyone works. Especially if you're an older car collector or you're younger and you go to school, you don't have the ability to be at Target at 12 o'clock on a Wednesday, let alone follow it when 18 other guys who do this for a living, that's what they do. Nothing at this location. People are starting to bully each other online within our own community and that saddens me and makes me feel a little bit unsafe, actually. Yeah, it's just sad to see how they've um, ruined Pokemon collecting for all of us. Or then you get, you know, the celebrities in here that just, you know, are able to afford the most, people are asking the most ridiculous prices for stuff and because we don't have the money for it, you don't have the money for it, some celebrity does, bless to them that they have those are funds, but again, it's the assholes that go ahead and say, you know what, $500,000 for this box, and then it's like, Okay, last year it was only worth 50000 And then one person was like, well, I have the money, whatever, it's just money. You know, it takes the dream away from everybody else who wanted to own one. Are you able to pay these prices? Is this going to go on for much longer? Do we ride out the storm? There has never been a worse time to be a simple collector of shiny cardboard. Because apparently you just can't get any product anymore. So I wake up this morning, and I'm super hyped. It's the Pokemon presentation day, I'm psyched to see what announcements they have. You know, it's Pokemon week, Pokemon day, we're celebrating 25 years of this franchise. I'm hyped, so hyped. And then I go to my phone, and I open Discord, and see this message. I'm so mad. I have multiple stores from where I live, not having Shining Fates or any TCG. I've even called stores outside my city just to try and get some, and they're sold out as well. Then I hear from store owners that people are beating each other up just to get cards. This is getting way out of hand. I might just give up on Pokemon altogether because it's not worth getting beat up for cards. I'm very disappointed right now and mad. 
any advice. And I read that message and I don't know why, because I've seen dozens of messages like this before on every single platform, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Discord, Instagram, everywhere, everyone is talking about this. This has been the discourse in the Pokemon world for a while now, but for some reason, when I read that message, I think it was the stark contrast between me like being super hyped about Pokemon and waking up like really excited and then opening up my phone and seeing this message and just kind of being snapped into the reality of the situation. I just sat there thinking like, how did it get to this point? And you know, I haven't made this video. I've put it off for several months because I'm like, whatever, you know, everyone's talking about this. Scalpers bad, don't buy from scalpers. Like, what am I gonna say that's gonna contribute to this conversation besides a few couple little different things here and there. I'm just gonna keep doing my thing, making happy videos, doing openings, whatever. And then I realized, you know, the reason I could just put off this video, like, oh, whatever, I'm just gonna keep doing my own thing is because I'm in a position that isn't being affected by this right now. You know, I'm not one of those people who's sitting there trying to find product and driving hours and hours to stores, trying to get product and MSRP because you can't find it anywhere uh, without it being scalped or having to pay market price, which is now triple MSRP. I wasn't being affected by that because I'm in a super privileged position on my channel. I'm sponsored. Uh, I can get new product. I have that accessible to me, right? Then that really got me thinking, like who is out there that isn't being affected by this that has a large platform, has accessibility to the product, or they have tons of money to be able to go out and buy the product at scalper prices because that's like pennies for them. Who is out there saying anything to stick up for the mass majority of what's going on with people right now? Any advice? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I read that and I'm like, what do I even say to this right now? What can I say to this? that is going to change this person from literally just quitting Pokemon altogether. And then I'm like, a lot of people feel this way right now. People are literally leaving the hobby of Pokemon that they've loved for years and years and years because of this situation right now. And no one with a large platform is talking about it, at least from what I've seen. None of these huge creators that represent Pokemon are out here saying absolutely anything about this. And I'm not gonna say I'm just gonna create this video and it's all gonna change and be better and like, woo, yay, happiness, because I don't have that sort of influence. My channel is still very small compared to larger YouTubers on here and internet celebrities or whatever, but at least I'll know that I put it out there and I did this on my platform to try and improve things because I have a lot to say and hopefully it, it goes well. <laughs> so that's why I'm making this video right now because I want to help. So whew, that was a lot. Let's, let's get into this. So before we can get into what happened to the Pokemon TCG, how did we get to this point? You have to understand the players in the story. Who does the Pokemon TCG community consist of? Because when you discuss Pokemon TCG topics, everyone is coming at it from a different angle based on their own experiences and opinions formulated by what they prioritize in Pokemon TCG. So if you have a different experience from someone else, you're going to have differing opinions, and that's when all the arguing and turmoil usually starts. So let's get into four general categories that I thought of. These are very general generalized basic categories and my own opinion of where I think people fit into Pokemon TCG and how they consume Pokemon TCG. These four categories are sellers, collectors, players, and content creators. Before I get into explaining them, I just want to say you can be all four of these things at once, or three of these things, or two of these things, or just one of these things, but they all exist 
and blend together when you're talking about the TCG community. So first we have sellers. When I'm talking about sellers, I'm not talking about just a single person that sells a couple cards in their collection sometimes. And I'm also not talking about big box stores like Walmart or Target because those stores are stagnant sellers. They're always going to be selling at MSRP and they're allocated whatever by Pokemon. And that is just, that's it, that's stagnant. When I'm referring to sellers, I'm talking about your local card shops or businesses that can fluctuate prices. I'm talking about flippers or scalpers that buy stuff specifically just to flip it for more money. I'm talking about the people who buy tons of product to open it up, grade the cards, and then sell slash flip the cards. That's who I'm referring to for sellers. A seller's main priority, whether they're doing it ethically or unethically, because both fall into this category, is to make a profit. Now the big difference between a local card shop versus a scalper is that in my opinion a scalper takes advantage of current market conditions where demand is extremely high but supply is very low in order to scalp out of pure personal gain. It's going into their own pocket versus an online shop, a local card shop. They have overhead, they have a space that they rent, they have employees that they have to pay, they have a business that they're trying to keep afloat. That is the huge, huge differentiating factor between these two things. Now that's not to say there's zero bad apples in the card shop local game store owners because you can still own a game shop and want your business to succeed and practice unethical things. But at the end of the day, both a business and a scalper have one main priority, which is to profit. I just wanted to pinpoint something I didn't address. A lot of people talk about scalpers like they're also struggling. A lot of people scalp to provide for their families. Not all scalpers are bad. And I just wanna say I'm not here to discuss the morality of anyone in this video or why they're doing the things they're doing. What we're discussing in this video is the outcome of these actions or the events that led up to where we're at now in the reality of the Pokemon community. So regardless of why people are doing these things, the outcome is still the same and this whole whole scalper argument is just another way that the mass majority of people are inwardly arguing with each other and causing more toxicity and disdain within the conversations and the Pokemon world rather than actually looking at the root of the problem, how we've gotten to this point and how we can improve from here. So that's what we're talking about in this video, not the morality of the situation or I'm not looking to argue more within ourselves. Now you have collectors. A collector's main priority is to increase their collection, whether that be sealed product, cards or sets, slabs or graded cards. They'll keep stuff sealed or they will open it up to try to chase cards, have fun opening product, complete sets, trade cards. They form their collection based off their own personal enjoyment in the hobby. Pokemon collectors are anyone who isn't selling off their collection at a massive scale. So if you just have a collection to sell it all, you're not really collecting, you're a seller. You're a collector if you have your collection and you're keeping your collection based off your own personal enjoyment of your collection. Sure, you can sell or trade cards here and there, but for a majority of your collection, you're keeping it because you enjoy it, not to sell it for profit. I would say Pokemon collectors encompass a majority of the community and the TCG consumers. Then we have Pokemon players the least touched on, the least talked about, the least acknowledged uh, in the Pokemon TCG community. And these people's main priority is to enjoy actually playing the Pokemon trading card game. Players are the core of the Pokemon hobby and what keeps Pokemon alive outside of the shiny Charizard chase card. Players influence and spark the future of the Pokemon TCG, the sets, the influence those sets and cards have on the meta. All of this is formulated around Pokemon players. Players are also the hearts of the community. Pokemon Worlds is the largest Pokemon event. It's a global event that unites all the Pokemon players and lovers of the TCG and the VGC and Pokemon Go and you all get together and just enjoy this hobby together. Players can either be casual or competitive, but the main priority of Pokemon players is to enjoy 
playing the cards and enjoy the playing card community. Then we have content creators, the people that tie all three of these categories together. So the main priority of content creators is to create entertainment or videos or live streams around these three categories that I just discussed. Selling or investing type content, advice, things like that pack breaks, collection showcases, opening products, collector type content, and then TCG content, set reviews, deck list analysis, tournaments. These three categories are represented by faces in the community, large YouTubers, Twitch streamers, people on Twitter, on Instagram. When I discuss content creators though, I'm mainly talking about not just someone who has an Instagram page where they post Pokemon. I'm talking about people whose full-time job it is to create Pokemon content. They're paying their bills and living their life based off creating content surrounded by Pokemon. The largest Pokemon creators and influencers are the face and the content that people see when they're entering the Pokemon community for the first time, and it's the information and the entertainment that people get who already exist in the Pokemon realm, like all of you watching me right now. When you create Pokemon content, it should be fueled by your passion and enthusiasm and love for the hobby and the cards, and most of the time, that's how it starts. But full-time content creators are in a unique position, which is why I put them in their own category. Because full-time content creators are a cross between business owners themselves while also being genuine, enthusiastic collectors. Full-time content creators are stuck in the middle with dual priorities. On one end, they're business owners. Their channel is their means of income and how they pay their bills and are able to buy the things that they enjoy and want to buy. On the other hand, that content is fueled by their passion and enthusiasm and love for the hobby. But sometimes these lines can be blurred. And when you have such a large platform, a huge audience, and a ton of influence on this community, every single action you make heavily affects and influences the way people view the Pokemon TCG community and the direction it goes. And when the discussion of Pokemon TCG starts to shift, into money or monetary gain or treating Pokemon like it's some sort of currency rather than the hobby that you got into and love and enjoy. Content creators are left in a position where it becomes more profitable for them to post videos of them opening hundreds and hundreds of packs worth thousands of dollars day after day and always having to one-up themselves monetarily over and over again. Unfortunately, this content Content shift is what leads to new people entering the Pokemon world and seeing that this is where Pokemon is, this is where it's going, and if you can't buy hundreds of packs worth thousands of dollars, then you can't compete. The same audiences that are struggling every single day to collect and enjoy a hobby that they love so much are the same audiences consuming this type of content that's working against them. And the more money and exposure these content creators get for this type of content, the more they're going to make it, influencing new people, online personalities, celebrities, news outlets to treat Pokemon like all it's good for is making money off. Of, encouraging everyone else to go out and do the same. And they will continuously tap into this audience over and over again to make as much profit as possible. Until the largest influencers and faces of the Pokemon world change this type of content, change what they're normalizing and the direction that they're pointing the Pokemon community in, nothing is going to change. And as long as we continue to validate this type of content with likes, views, and comments, Comments. They're going to continue making it because we're putting the money into their pockets. So what I wrote down uh, is that content creators main priority is to create the entertainment based on whatever faction of Pokemon they're in, right? So whether they like to the collecting side, the TCG player side, whatever. That's their main priority, is to create entertainment for others. 
But what if their main priority is to profit, just like a store or a scalper? What if that's their main priority? And the way they found how to do that is through creating the content they create. Would they still be creating the content they create if they made zero dollars from it? So let's get into what happened. So I was trying to think about where this started, and I think I can kind of trace things back to the very start before any of us knew what was about to happen, to August 2019 and the release of Hidden Fates. Hidden Fates was a specialty set that had a very unique aspect to it, which was full art shiny Pokemon. Now before this set, there was no set set, like there were promos and things like that, but no set that was based on full art shiny Pokemon. There's Shining Legends that has baby shiny Pokemon or, you know, the small card shiny Pokemon, but no full art reprint shinies of these Pokemon. Now everybody loves to shiny hunt, whether it's in the VGC, the Pokemon Go community, people love shinies. It's so funny, you take a Pokemon and just change its color and make it super rare, and everybody wants all of them. <laughs> in my opinion, this set got so many more eyes on the Pokemon trading card game and actually collecting the cards. I was working at a card shop at the time and I would have new people come into the card shop all the time asking, do you guys have hidden fates? People that had never touched Pokemon before and now they want to get their hands on hidden fates. And even though it was highly sought after, it was not nearly anywhere, anywhere close to how difficult it is to find Pokemon product now. This was a popular set, but you could still walk into a Walmart or a Target and find it. You could still buy it from an LGS for not triple MSRP. Then you have Cosmic Eclipse released November 1st. This set had gorgeous alternate artworks. It was the finale of Sun and Moon. Fantastic set, beautiful cards, beautiful set no issues getting product. Fast forward to February 7th, 2020, Sword and Shield base set gets released. Super hyped, it's an entirely new TCG generation, new mechanics to the game, new cards. It's so exciting, very hyped, no issues getting the product. Then around March, 2020, we all know what happened, Rona. Now we have three sets that come out between Rona and October. Those sets are Rebel Clash, Darkness Ablaze, and Champion's Path. Rebel Clash, no issues obtaining the product. Darkness Ablaze, no issues obtaining the product. Champion's Path releases September 25th. This set has pretty much one single card that everyone is chasing, that collectors are chasing, the shiny Charizard V. During these months of Rona, hobbies, at-home activities, collectible activities had risen so much. People were just trying to not be bored and find something that would bring them happiness at home. So September 25th, the release of Champion's Path, we're at a point in time now where at-home activities has increased the interest in Pokemon. Print facilities for Pokemon are already struggling to keep up with the increased demand, with their factories and everything being shut down for months. They're behind schedule, they're having to do things in waves, they're struggling. Then we have October 3rd. Logan Paul releases a video stating he bought a 200,000 first edition base set booster box to his 2.8 million subscriber fan base. In that same video, he indicates he's auctioning slash selling these packs to anyone that wants to buy them for a pack break, which he's going to do live on his YouTube channel October 9th. Now at this point, we have millions of new eyeballs on Pokemon TCG. Everyone who's saying, wow, Pokemon still exists? Pokemon's still around. People still collect Pokemon? People play Pokemon? Now before this live stream box break on October 9th, we have another date of a video that was released October 6th. This video was released on Leon Hart's channel, one of the largest Pokemon TCG content creators on 
pretty much every platform. Now, do I think Leon Hart saw Logan Paul's video, contacted him, flew out to him, filmed the collaboration video, edited the collaboration video, and then posted that collab video just three days after Logan Paul posted his? Probably not. I can almost guarantee there was discussion and planning and dates laid out beforehand on how this was going to go down and what was the best way for Logan Paul to gain traction on this live stream that he announced for October 9th. It would be to get in front of the faces of the Pokemon community and who is one of the largest US content creators, if not the largest, on the platform that is at the face of everyone's YouTube search boxes when they search for Pokemon TCG. And the new 2.8 million users you have searching Pokemon TCG, whose videos are gonna pop up? Leonhardt's. Not only that, but I don't know if you know this, Logan Paul is not the most liked creator out there. He's literally referred to in articles as controversial Logan Paul, like it's a part of his name. Whether you like it or not, Leon Hart's October 6 collaboration video with Logan Paul welcomed Logan Paul into the Pokemon TCG community with open arms. When Logan Paul was able to collaborate with one of the largest, most trusted and respected creators in Pokemon TCG, he single-handedly pulled off walking into the community with the least amount of backlash and upset as possible following his controversial past. Simultaneously, Leonhart was able to capitalize on the giant platform of millions of new viewers and subscribers that Logan Paul made available to him. It was a win-win for both parties. Uh, my name's Leonhart, stay awesome, stay positive. This is... Hey, I'm Jake Paul's brother. <laughs> Oh, and do you have an opinion or anything to say on how this might not be a good idea? Well, how could you say that? That's a terrible thing to say because this event is for charity, okay? So you must hate charity. You're terrible. Wow, you're an awful person. Anyway, then we have the actual stream. A majority of the people that bought packs from Logan Paul were also content creators. Those content creators bought those packs to get their name out there and also to make their own content based off of the Logan Paul content. I didn't buy the pack and the cards itself. What I bought was the opportunity to be involved in one of the biggest Pokemon live streams of all time, one of the biggest Pokemon events of all time, and to get some exposure plus content out of the Logan Paul live stream. These large content creators are now getting even more more views and more likes and more traction that are promoting the Logan Paul box break that happened, the prices they paid for that, and involve themselves in an event that highlighted the collectibles guru. Packs. Those two $11,000 packs were exceptionally expensive. If anyone's curious to how much money that is, it's basically this much money plus about a little bit more. And that, my friends, is how the 30k Bulbasaur meme was created. DGS. 10,000, 20,000 plus, maybe 30. So now we have a majority of the largest Pokemon TCG collector content creators hopping into this Logan Paul live stream because they have the spare money to buy a pack to make that money back off of views, likes, clicks, shares, and exposure on their own personal channels. Now with a lot more investor money flowing into Pokemon and skyrocketing prices, the value of Pokemon is rising. Mid-October, the same month as Logan Paul's live stream, a record high sale. A Charizard priced at $40,000 sells on auction for $183 thousand dollars with all the new eyes on pokemon this is what we have people with a lot of money are going to spend their money and invest into vintage pokemon now where are we at for all the people who don't have a ton of money who can't jump in on the logan paul pack break who can't buy a charizard for hundred and eighty three thousand dollars who now can't even afford the vintage product anymore that has skyrocketed and quadrupled in price. Well, some people are very happy, some people are very sad. The people that are happy are the people who have collected Pokemon for a very long time. They have vintage collections already. Now their vintage collection is worth so much more than it was. People who did not or have never collected, opened, invested in vintage, 
no longer have the ability to. Unless they have a ton of money they can throw into it, they are out of luck. Vintage is just out of reach. But hey, at least you still have modern products to collect, right? Oh wait. Now we have October 27th. October 27th is when Dumb Money Live, what a name, <laughs> made a video where they were buying a record high first edition booster box from Collectibles Guru. If you don't know the ending to this story, the box was fake. Surprise, surprise. Now looking back on this, this live stream, this story of the giant scam by Collectibles Guru made headlines. A lot of people knew about it. And while we think, oh, it's so funny, these people who tried to buy something for a ridiculous price got scammed, haha. -ha, I think it also highlighted to many other people that aren't in the TCG community how much money is out there and that people are willing to pay for a product that they have very little knowledge about and they're riding the hype train of it to get into it and treat it like it's a stock and invest into it. They will pay a lot of money for something you can just reseal and repackage. Now us watching this, we have no nefarious thoughts. We're not like, oh wow, this is sick. I can go grab a box and reseal it and sell it for a ton of money too. We are not scammers, so we don't think that way. But to someone watching this who is a scammer, that's an open door. That is an opportunity. That is a business deal for them. They don't care about scamming people because they can do it easily. The collector probably won't even open the box. If they reseal it good enough, then they can earn a lot of money off of that and escape scot-free. I truly believe this live stream opened the door to tons more scammers in the Pokemon community. If it wasn't already enough attracting millions of people into it and the money that can be made in Pokemon, now we have, oh, look at the money I can make scamming people, sick, yo. And what makes this stream even worse is the fact that Leonhart, he's sitting at the table right next to Collectibles Guru, analyzing this box, saying everything checks out, all looks good to him, good things here. It does look like it's kind of like, the packs are almost like level, but the one on this side is a little bit lower. Uh, so that's one of the many tests that you can do as far as just taking a look at the size of the box. And, yeah, so it's yeah. a good thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. He's at this event with a channel that's treating Pokemon as if it's the stock market. Literally people who admit that they only usually trade in the stock market and now they want to trade in Pokemon and bring investors and collectors together to formulate these great business deals in Pokemon a year later and sell all the packs and whatever. The first purpose is I truly believe this is a good investment. Uh, Logan Paul invested $200,000 in a box of Pokemon cards exactly like this, uh, auctioned them off a few weeks later to all of his friends and YouTubers and influencers and essentially doubled his money. I feel we can do the same thing now because there are so many influencers, so many celebrities, YouTubers that are rushing into this Pokemon game. They're treating Pokemon like it's just a monetary value and right sitting in this event that ended up being a scam, sitting next to the scammer is one of the largest YouTube channels that's supposed to be the face of Pokemon TCG. Let's move on. So now we're at a point where vintage is out of reach. There's tons more eyes on Pokemon. Investor content, YouTube investing, getting into Pokemon type content is skyrocketing in views. Scalpers, scammers, people trying to make a quick buck on Pokemon, influencers, celebrities getting into Pokemon, people with tons of money jumping into Pokemon, capitalizing on Pokemon, throwing money at booster boxes of vintage products, charging triple the price on packs to do pack breaks on their Twitch streams or their YouTube channels. I priced this event at a premium. Uh, I priced it to what I thought was the demand. I priced it to the kind of you know, exposure and event in general. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna be refunding like 30 people. Uh, I'm dropping the price down to uh, 1300 a pack instead of 1800 a pack.
all of this behavior surrounding Pokemon is just a giant snowball tumbling down the hill. And then we have November 13th release of Vivid Voltage. Vivid Voltage is the first set that I think things really started to go downhill and look very grim for collectors of Pokemon. This was the first main set release after Logan Paul and all the shenanigans after that. Now you have to also understand it is an extremely low quantity, so it's low print and extremely high demand. And Vivid Voltage is the first set where you actually couldn't find it in stores. I still can't find it in stores. I'm not talking about big box stores, Walmarts, or Targets, which I can't find it there either. But even local game stores were sold out. And because places were selling out so quickly, now the product price rises because of low supply and high demand. And this wasn't even a specialty set. This didn't even have a shiny Charizard in it. Now you can't find a Vivid Voltage booster box the very last set that was released, unless it's 200 plus dollars. For a set to rise to that price, it usually takes a very long time and a lot of that product being opened over a long period of time to where the population of the product goes down significantly. Finding that product sealed is very slim and then the price will rise. But this is the last released modern set and you can't buy it sealed. I think this is when we really started to lose, like, the Pokemon community. This, right about then, after Vivid Voltage. Because if you can't get product, not even just the recent set that's now being scalped or whatever, but any set, if you can't find it anywhere, if you can't collect it unless you're buying singles, if you can no longer feel that joy of opening packs unless you pre-ordered the product months in advance, then why would you stay? That's how people feel. If they can't do it anymore, if it's not accessible, they're going to do something else that makes them happy and that doesn't bring them dread every day thinking about, am I going to be able to get this product or not? Can I even find it in a store if I go to? Am I going to have to go two hours early and camp outside the store and then a scalper just buys it all right before I have a chance? That sounds horrible. And then we had the release of the McDonald's promos and the cereal boxes with a promo card in it. Cereal boxes being torn off of shelves and ripped open to get the promo card and steal it and leave. McDonald's where people are going and purposely buying cases of the toys to open it to pull the hollow Pikachu a $50 card so they can go grade it and then falsely sell it for 18 grand. That right there tells me that we did lose the Pokemon community, or at least what's representing the Pokemon community is not the Pokemon community. Because I know for a fact, any of my friends or anyone that I know that collects Pokemon and genuinely loves Pokemon will not be going and tearing cereal boxes to pull out cards to go make money off of them, or going into McDonald's and buying tons of packs of cards or a billion Happy Meals to go make money off of them. No one that I know in the Pokemon community, besides scumbags, would do that. So that's when I know that who is representing the Pokemon TCG world is not us, is not me, is not my friends. It's scammers and scalpers and people trying to make a quick buck. And that's not what Pokemon is. That's never what Pokemon has been. <sighs> Shining Fates, that's the other thing too, is like, oh, well, I have 0% chance of getting product, right, unless I pre-order. Oh, well, guess what? Now pre-orders are a hundred plus dollars for a $50 MSRP product. Now that's what this is. So now, if you don't have a hundred plus dollars to throw at a pre-order before a set's even released, then you have to wait in line or uh, stand outside of stores, which by the way, have giant mobs of people outside. And now we're at the point where people are punching each other in the face, fighting over cards, literally attacking each other, literal violence for Pokemon cards. That's what, this has come to.
And you know who this doesn't affect? The people with a ton of money. The people with the largest platforms and the most influence and the connections and the disposable income and the people who have you in their back pockets as an audience. That's who it doesn't affect. You know, I sit here and I love my channel and I care about the Pokemon TCG and I'm out there trying to get people into playing Pokemon TCG because I'm so passionate about Pokemon TCG, playing the actual game. And I've to sat here and told myself over and over and over again, you know, I'm the best of both worlds. I'm a collector and a player and my main focus is always getting people into playing because I enjoy this hobby, I love it and it can help people form new connections with Pokemon. But I am one of those people who's just in my limbo, making my content, you know, trying to encourage people to get into TCG. That's not bad. That's great. But at the same time, no one's there sticking up for you. There's these people with all the money, all the connections, all the viewership, all of the exposure, all of all of that. They're on the front page of YouTube. All of that. And what are they doing? What are they saying about this? Are they advocating for you, their audience, the people that put the money in their pockets, the people that watch their videos, the people you are the reason they're as big as they are? And are they sticking up for you? No. The same people that we're supporting and encouraging and watching every day on this platform are the same people who are feeding into monetizing and using these other people to just milk their viewership, milk their views. I mean, why is it all about money now? Look at the thumbnails. If you're not looking at Pokemon as an investment or a way to make money or a means to an end to just pay your bills or make a quick buck or buy a Ferrari or whatever you're trying to do with Pokemon, if you're not doing that, you're not talked about. You're not there. None of them even acknowledge that you're here struggling to just enjoy the hobby that you love, that helped you through difficult times, that you enjoy doing, that you don't care about buying 30 ETBs to sell them for profit. You just want one to open, to keep in your collection, to enjoy the artwork, to love the cards, to play with the cards. That's what you want. But do they care about that? Over the past year, Paul says that he's spent two million on Pokemon cards, still hasn't revealed all of his purchases. He feels that he has had a very positive impact on the Pokemon card community and thinks that he just reminded people how special Pokemon really is. All I've done is highlighted how cool, meaningful, and grand Pokemon is. I've connected with such cool collectors, Paul said. They don't even see it. You're literally talking about the mass majority of people that can't even enjoy the hobby that they love and still love and just want to be a part of. They, they don't get to do that anymore. And then the opposite of that, the only thing I've done is impact Pokemon positively. They don't even acknowledge it. I think what Logan Paul did was a good reminder to a lot of people that Pokemon is still out there. Real Breaking Nate said, he's having fun with it in his way. And if that's the way he wants to have fun with it, then that's perfectly okay. Of course, TCG YouTubers have always been a thing. Just look at Max Mofo or Primetime Pokemon. It's not some new phenomenon that suddenly swept the internet, but the difference is that they never encroached on anyone else's ability to collect and have fun. That's not to say Logan Logan Paul isn't allowed to tap into the nostalgia, of course he is, but constantly advertising first edition booster box breaks with over the top live streams flashing around PSA 10 shadowless Charizards like they're $10 a piece is doing more harm than good. The issue with somebody like Paul pulling millions of eyes into the TCG is that it's turned something that was once a fun hobby into a cash cow. I'll let his own words speak for themselves here. Although I bought a box in September for 200k, they're now selling for the price point that I set between 300 to 400k. This isn't just the case with old sets either. New expansions are suffering the same spike. So right here in this quote, he says 
New expansions are suffering the same spike, but in the same token, he will also say, I brought nothing but positivity and a p made a positive impact on the Pokemon community. At the end of the day, he, like any fan, has every right to buy as much TCG collectibles as he wants, and I'm sure his intention isn't to stop anyone from being able to play or enjoy the hobby, but at its core, the magic and fun of collecting Pokemon cards is now being lost for many. Because of his influence, it's just a new stock market, and if you don't have the money, you can't even participate. And you know what's also funny about this? The karma in this too. The karma. Do you know who's never talked about in the Pokemon TCG community? Who gets the least amount of exposure? Pokemon TCG players. And their content is the least viewed, the least cared about, the least encouraged. The content that's enjoying the game for the purpose of what it was. Enjoying Pokemon cards not for the money or the value, but forming connections with these cards because you play them in decks. And they carry you through tournaments and they help you in games. And you're forming this experience with the cards that's so much fun. These people are cared about the least in the online sphere in the Pokemon TCG world. Yet they are the least affected by all of this shenanigans. You can buy singles easily for decks. You can play online easily. You can crack packs online easily. Obviously it's not the same as cracking packs in person, 100% understand that. But still, you can still enjoy Pokemon if you're a TCG player. My least viewed videos are my Pokemon TCG videos. But I can do a live stream opening 1200 packs of Champion's Path and everybody cares about it so much more. I hate that so much and not because I dislike collecting, not because I discourage collecting, but because I want it to be equal. I want it to be even. I want everyone to enjoy this hobby together equally and give TCG playing a chance because it really is so much fun and helps so much with a new way to enjoy the cards and that is what my channel is about. That's what my channel's always been about. Helping more people get into the TCG and I will continue to encourage that on my channel because I am so passionate about the TCG and there's so many people that invest their entire lives into playing Pokemon TCG competitively and teaching new people how to play and getting new people involved and competing in tournaments and going to worlds and they invest so much time and money and travel expenses and all this stuff into TCG and they are cared about the least. You guys deserve so much more kudos than you get. Seriously. Sorry, but like no one cares about TCG players and it's really f like infuriating. <laughs> it's just sad to see the state that things are in and to feel so helpless. I'm just a, a small, you know, 50K YouTube channel. This video is probably not even gonna get a ton of views, to be honest. But to everyone who is watching this and who does care, there are things you can do. You know, I wish I could give more advice and more help, but I can't. I wish I could solve everyone's problems, but I can't. So just try to be patient. You know, even if you don't want to play the TCG, try to find other ways to keep your love of Pokemon alive. Otherwise, when this fad ends and Logan Paul goes away and all these people scamming can't find any more people to scalp off of, who's going to be left to salvage the Pokemon community? And I really hope that you are one of those people. Because we need people with genuine passion and enthusiasm toward this game and this franchise and buying tons of plushies. We need that. Still, after all of this goes away and goes back to normal, hopefully. This box right here that you can't find anywhere on the shelves, I bet you this probably has the Charizard in it because every time I do a giveaway, it always has the most expensive card in it. <laughs> and I give it away. <laughs> I was gonna say you don't have to do anything to enter this giveaway because I'm not trying to give this away to boost my own platform. I just genuinely wanna give this to you because I know that there's so many people that haven't gotten this and I have more than enough that I can give one away. Taco is upset that I'm giving this away. He wanted to keep it for our collection, but I don't care. I'm giving it away. <laughs> 
Sorry, Taco. But anyway, I realized I couldn't just have you do nothing because then how would I choose a winner? So if you want to enter to win this ETB, tell me in the comments below why you got into Pokemon or why you love Pokemon. Write something to remind people that there is a Pokemon community out there that actually cares about Pokemon, that has a connection to Pokemon outside of monetary value. That's what I wanna show in the comment section. If you have any other comments or things you wanna talk about, feel free to leave it below as well. But that, that is who I'm gonna choose for one of the winners for this ETB. And I hope to God it doesn't go to a scalper. I know there's gonna be scalpers in my comments lying about some stories about how they collect Pokemon when they were an infant or something. And I'd be upset if it goes to a scalper. So if you're a scalper, get out of here. <laughs> and with that, it is now 2 a.m. and I've been talking for hours. So I'm gonna get off of here. Thank you guys so much for listening to this rant. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.